Hello and welcome to the dashboard course by Trumpixel. I'm Sumit Bansal and in this video I will show you 10 advanced Excel charting examples. I'm creating this as a bonus video for this dashboard course. So let's get started. Here I have the main category in column A and within main category each of these categories have three subcategories so for example in case of fruits i have apple banana and orange similarly in vegetable i have these three categ subcategories and in packaged food i have these three subcategories and for each subcategory i have a spent number now if i have to plot this in a column bar chart then i can simply plot this data so for example if i go here insert i would select this data maybe select this data go to insert chart and this would plot these chart but what happens is here there is no main category so there is nothing which tells me that these are the fruits category and this is the vegetable category if you want to make that happen then simply select this entire thing this entire data in the same format go to insert and insert a column bar chart now you can see that you have the fruits main category here and within this category you have apple, banana and orange. Similarly in vegetables you have these three and in packaged fruit food you have these three. The idea is that your data should be arranged in such a way where you have the main category and all the subcategories adjacent to it and the rows below it, the cells below it should be empty. Similarly in vegetable the cells below vegetable are empty and these are the subcategory. So if your data is arranged in such a way then you can get this construct. In this part of the video, I'll show you how to create a Gauss chart or some people also call this speedometer chart. And the intent is that I have uh, this cell here and this is the value. And when I change this value, then the speedometer chart should change. This needle should move towards that value. So for example, if I, if I make this 70, then the needle moves to 70. And if I make this say 50, then the needle moves to 50. Now this, you might have seen this chart as a part of a lot of dashboards or in a lot of reports. It is not a very easy chart to make and it takes a lot of effort. I do not know if that effort is worth this because there are many other alternatives, but it has a lot of technique that you can learn while creating it. So I'll show you step by step how to make this chart. Here I have the values, which means that I want uh, the 20% part of my chart to be low, then uh, 20 to 50 percent should be medium and then 50 to 100 percent should be high which is indicative here in this chart first 20 percent is low then this is medium and then this is high so to do this i would have to use these two data ranges i would use a donut chart and i would use a pie chart first let's see how i would use a donut chart to create this so i would select this data and this data has nothing but the same type calculation this is this cell uh, then it is next 30 since here it says 50 i would have to take this range the first 20 uh, points or the first 20 percent would be low then the next 30 percent would be medium then the next 30 percent next 50 percent would be high and these three combined to make 100 percent and then this is 100 percent because i would be creating a donut chart so this is just 50 percent of what the donut chart is and the next 30 percent would be the balance that i have to maintain so let me show you how to do this i would select this data i would go to insert and i would create a donut chart now the problem here is that uh, this is not how this chart looks it is a bit uh, tilted you may you may say so i would right click on the chart and say format chart area and here if i choose the chart i would use format data series and here i would go to this angle angle of first slice and i would make it to 70 degree and as soon as I do this, you can see that now I have these three categories at the top and this entire thing at the bottom. Let me delete everything else. I would delete the legend and the title because I do not need them. And I would have to make these changes. I would have to make them transparent. So to do that, I would make this as no fill, uh, no border. Similarly, I would go to this part. I would make, I would change the fill to green and I would make the border as no border. And in this case, I would re keep this as it is and this maybe I can change this to uh, a dark red color something like this and again no border so the first part of the chart is ready this is the donut chart which has uh, the first 20 percent as low the next 30 percent as medium and the re remaining as uh, high now I have to create this needle let me put this chart on the side for now 
and I would create this needle using the data for this pie chart. And the idea is that when I change the actual value, the needle should move. So my actual value is here and I have done a small trick here. I have subtracted two from this value so that the remaining part of the needle which is to the left of it is this much and then the needle should have the width of two points. I'm doing this because I tried this with the one and the needle was not visible and I tried it with three and it was too wide so two seems uh, appropriate and then the remaining here I am using a formula d6 into two which is this value into two minus b9 minus a9 which means that my entire pie chart would have the total value of 200. Of that 200, I'm subtracting these values so that my chart can align easily with the donor chart. And you'll see how this makes sense. Let me select this and go to insert and I would insert a pie chart. Now here you can see again, uh, there is a rotation problem. So I would delete all these things and I would right click and go to format data series. And here I would change this angle to 270 degree. And now my chart lines well. I would have to individually select these components and go and change the fill to no fill and no border. Similarly, I have to do it for this part as well, no fill and no border. And I would select this line, small line, and I would make it no border because there was a white border around it, which was making it look very small. Now, all I have to do is I have to align these two charts. So I would select both these charts, go to format, in a line, I would say a line top first, then a line left, which is here. And I would have to make this plot area transparent. So I would say no fill. Again, in the case of the chart, which is below this for here as well, I would say no fill. And I would also have to change the border so that there is no border around this chart. Similarly for this, I would say no border. Now I can again arrange these two. Let me close this. I would say format, align, top, align, left. And you can see that these have aligned perfectly now. And if I change this value, and if I want to, I can also change the color of this marker because this is orange, which is overlapping with this. But this is a minor thing. I'm sure you can do this. If I change this value to say 15, and you can see that the marker has moved and it comes here to the low segment. Similarly, if I change this to 60, then it moves to the high segment. So this is how you can create a gauge chart or a thumb or a speedometer chart, as we say. And you may use it in reports. As you saw, this is a bit complicated. It's not very easy to make because you have to create two charts and then you have to combine them. But if you have made one, this these charts look really good in dashboards. In this part of the video, I'll show you how to create a thermometer chart. Here I already have a sample and you see I have actual value and maximum value. And if I change the actual value to say 30, then this thermometer chart adjusts the level. Similarly, if I make this 99, then it would adjust the level and come almost to the top. Let me make it 40. And now let, uh, let me show you how to create this. So to create this, a very simple technique is to just select the data, go to insert and select this cluster chart, clustered column chart. Now, I would simply select this and click on switch row to column. The reason I'm doing it because now I would be able to overlap these two charts. If I do not do it, if I click on select data, you can see that now there are two series. Earlier, this was the case where I had one series and these were plotted on the x-axis, one and two. I've simply switched the row and column. Now I'll be able to overlap these two columns because these are two different series. Here, let me change the color of this bar chart, this bar, single bar. I would go to fill, I would go to solid fill, and I would make this color. And in this case, let me make it no fill, and I would give it a border. I would give it the same color border. Now, if you look at it, all I have to do is I have to make them combine. And if I change the value here, so for example, if I make it 50, you can see that this value is changing and this value remains static because this is fixed. This is the maximum value. So now to overlap these two, I would simply right click, go to format data series. In case you're using 2010 or 2007, you would have a dialog box and you can do the same thing over there. And I would say the series overlap should be 100%. And as soon as I do this, these both overlap completely. Now, all I need to do is simply delete these elements. 
There is one thing I should tell you before I move on to delete all these elements. See what happens if I make this 90. As soon as I make this 90, this something happens to this chart and the reason is that this axis adjusted, adjusts itself. As of now it becomes 84. I would want this to always be 0 and the maximum to always be 100. So to fix that, this at that level, I would go and click and click on format axis and here in bounds I would say the minimum should be 0 and the maximum should be 100. So what I've done is I have fixed the bound. Now it would not change even if I make it 99 it would remain as it is. The starting point would be 0 and it would go up to 100. Now I can delete the vertical axis and I can delete these grid lines and also the horizontal axis. Now I have this. Let me make this 40 so it is easier to follow for you. Now all I have to do is simply change the width of this so that it looks like a thermometer as of now it was very wide and I would go and uh, select no fill in this case because earlier there was a white background and in case of border I would say no border so now it looks like a simple bar standing here and I would insert a shape I would use this shape here and I would change its color to this color I would say solid fill with the same color which is of the color of the bar and with the same line or you may choose to give no line color it really does not matter in that case and you can simply align these if you want you can use the format align options uh, and that is it your thermometer chart is ready now if you change this value to 20 your thermometer was the value the level of the thermometer would drop down to 20 points out of 100 similarly if you make it 80 oops I make it 800 if I make it 80 then it would adjust and go to 80. So this is how you can create a simple thermometer chart in Excel. In this part of the video I'll show you how to create a milestone chart. So here I have dates and I have activities. So this could be a project that you're working on or maybe you're planning ahead for the year and these are milestones that you want to achieve at these dates. So this gives you this chart. And the good part here is that if you delete any of the activities, for example, if I delete the kickoff call, then that activity is deleted along with the line. Similarly, if you go and delete any of the date here, so maybe you're not very sure when would be release 1.0. So you have deleted the date and that goes away. If you want, you can add the date back and it would come here. So this is a milestone chart that, that is really important while you are preparing for projects or if you are uh, preparing RFPs, then this could be a really important chart. So let's see how I've created this. I would delete this chart and I'll show you how I've created this from scratch. And to do this, I have used three helper columns. They are hidden here. So let me unhide these columns and I'll show you what happens here. The first two columns are exactly the same date and activity and the third is text placement. And here I have used these formulas. So the first one is if B3, if this cell is not empty, then give me this value, else give me a blank. A simple formula if this is not there then give me a blank else give me this value here I have said that if so here's the formula it uses an if condition it says and if this value C3 is not empty and if E3 this cell is not empty if these cells are not empty then give me the value in cell C3 else give me a not available and the reason I'm getting not available here is that this will not get plotted in the original chart otherwise what happens is if you do not have uh, this not available if you have uh, say a blank or a zero here then that creates problem in plotting it and I'll show you how it happens and here I have a random activity I, I'm saying that if this value is uh, if there is any value here or if there is any content then give me a number 10 else give me blank and for the below one I say that if there is something in cell f4 then give me minus 10 else give me blank and these text placement are important because as you saw the first activity was above the line and the second activity was below the line so this is the placement of these activities so that the chart is not cluttered now let's start with this let's create uh, the milestone chart I have selected this data I go to insert and I use the line with markers chart here now this looks very cluttered haphazard and this is not really what I want so I would click on it and I would delete it and I would manually add data to it. So I would go to select data and I would add a series and this time I would add date. What I want is I want a line which would say these dates January, February, March and all. So I would select the activity. 
see that I'm not selecting the date but the activity and see what happens it gives me one two three four five six seven and eight and all the values are zero the reason being that this is text now I would simply go and change the horizontal category axis labels as of now it says one two three which is here I would edit this and I would select the date so that I have these dates here now I would also have to add another chart another series to it and that series would be the activity that bars that you see when an activity is there there should be a bar that would name this activity and I would have to select the text placement values here and now when I click on this button you can see that I have this W here but I do not want the line with marker chart series so I would click OK OK and I would select any of these points and the entire series gets selected I would right click and I would select change series chart type and when I click on this I have the change series chart type dialog box here I would change this to stacked column chart and I would click OK as soon as I do this that line with marker is converted into a stacked column bar chart now I would click on this bar chart I would right click and select format data series this opens the format data series task pane if you're using 2010 or 2007 then it would open a dialog box here select secondary axis and as soon as you click OK in the dialog box or as soon as you close this format CD data series task pane you can see that the chart has distorted a bit these values have come to zero and these uh, 10 and minus 10 bars uh, go a little above the reason being that now a secondary axis has been introduced and it varies from minus 15 to 15 so a simple way to get rid of it is just delete it and as soon as you do this you can see that now you have this aligned perfectly now I do not want these thick bar charts I would want a simple line here and I would use the concept of error bars here so I would go to add chart element within the design tab if you're using 2010 and 7 there would be a layout tab and there you would have this option and I would add error bars and I would add more error bars option and it opens the format error bars dialog box or the task pane in case of 2013 I would select only minus and I would say no cap now I would say that this error bar should go right to the bottom of this bar and to do this I would say percentage is 100 percent and as soon as I put 100 percent here you can see that now every bar has a line which goes from the starting point to the length of this bar now I would just simply right click and I can change the color of the bar but before that let me add data labels to it so when I add data labels it adds 10 minus 10 which is the value of this bar but I do not want these values I want the activity name here so to do that I would right click here and select format data labels this opens the format data labels task pane in case of 2010 and 7 it would open the format data labels dialog box here instead of value oops let me first add data labels and in data labels let me right click and select format data labels in data labels instead of values you select category name all right so here there is a minor change that you would have to do you would have to select this bar chart and you would have to go to select data and here in activity you have these one two three four you would have to change these activities and select these so now your activity these values are kick off call data gathering and checkpoint and so on now when you go to data labels and you click on format data labels and select category name you can see that kick off call comes as the first data label data gathering comes as the second data label and you can deselect value and you would have these data labels available this trick works in 2010 and 2007 but if you're using 2013 you need not go to this detour and change the uh, the axis uh, x-axis that we as we just did you can simply say values from cells and 
if you click on it it would ask you what data label range you want and you can simply select this but this feature is not available in 2010 and 2007 so I've shown you the way you can do this in 2010 and 7 as well now all I need to do is I would have to right click format data series and I would have to say the color should be no fill and the border should be no line and now when I close this you can see that I have these lines and these data bars and I can simply change the position of these data bars I can simply drag this above the line so that it looks a bit neat in this case and I would do this for all these data labels now you can also f format this line a bit you can go and you can say that you do not want any line color but you may want marker color so in this case let me select this marker color and uh, no line in the border now when I close this I can delete these grid lines horizontal grid lines and you can see I have the same chart ready the same milestone chart ready which I showed you at the beginning of this video now if you go and you delete any of these you would see that it goes away if you bring it back that that activity would come similarly if you delete any of these activities say release 1.0 the entire activity goes away and you can see that in helper column it says not available so that is the reason we had used not available in case we had not used not available for example in case if I say give me blank it would still mess up your chart it would give you the dot which I do not want so that was the reason that we have used not available let me control Z again so this is how you can create a milestone chart uh, one last thing that I need to show you is that now if you go and you hide this data your chart displays nothing the reason being that now in your chart uh, let me undo these changes I have no fill and in border no border the reason here being that your chart is not you do not have the option selected which says that show data even if the cells are hidden so to do that select this go to design select data and here in hidden and empty cells select show data in hidden rows and columns and click OK click OK now even if you hide it this would be available so this is how you can create a milestone chart in Excel a waterfall chart gives you the individual components so that you would know that when you started you had a value and when you end you have a value because of these individual components which either get added to the value or get subtracted so in this case uh, I have a finance example where you start with days inventory outstanding and then there is day sales outstanding days payable outstanding and these three make up the cash conversion cycle so the formula for this cash conversion cycle is uh, days inventory outstanding plus day sales outstanding minus days payable outstanding so this plus this minus this is equal to this and this is very beautifully depicted by waterfall chart so I would show you how to create it uh, here I have the data for this chart so I have these values these are the actual values for inventory outstanding sales outstanding payable outstanding is, is a negative and cash conversion cycle which is the summation of all these now I have created these two columns top and bottom and you would know why I have created this when I show you how to make this in top we have this value the sum of these values and this is equal to the final value and in bottom it is the difference between these two values so now let me use these uh, these data points to create a waterfall chart I would select this and I would go to insert and here I would insert or let me simply insert a line chart so let me delete it I would not use markers it would just increase my work I would simply select this chart with line now when you have these two lines there is a functionality that you can use if you go to add chart element you would see something like up down bars and you can see it introduces up down bars between these two values so now if I click OK you can see that between the value of uh, top and bottom it has inserted a bar similarly between these differences have been inserted, inserted by bars and the negative value have a different color so now I can simply select this right click and say format down bars and here I would change the color to say blue and in this case I would change the color to red 
Now all I have to do is change the formatting of these lines. I would right click, go to format data series and I would say no line color and in marker no fill and no border. Similarly here I would say no line color, no marker fill and no border. And you have this chart ready. The only thing you may want to add is you do not know what is what, which bar represents what. So simply select this part or click anywhere in this data point. Let me select a data point here which is not visible but you can click on it. Go to select data and here click on edit and change these label range and click OK and click OK and now this is available here. So this is an easy way to create a waterfall chart and this is uh, by no means a very good way to create it because waterfall charts could be very complicated and it may be very difficult to maintain these in Excel. So if you want to create these waterfall charts and you work with them a lot, I would suggest you can buy a utility. Uh, I used to use something called as ThinkCell. Uh, you can use many add-ins that are available. Uh, but this is a quick and dirty way to create a waterfall chart in Excel. Here I have some activities and the start date and the duration it will take for that activity. Now I'll show you how to create a simple Gantt chart using this data. I would select this entire data. I would go to insert and I would select stacked bar chart. This one. Now let me delete these. Now I would select this data right click on format data series and here I would make it no fill and no line no line so that this is not visible now I would select this vertical axis values vertical category axis right click and select format axis and here I would say category in reverse order because you would notice that final deliverable is first and kickoff call is last but this should be in the reverse order so I would select categories in reverse order but this distorts the chart because the, these dates go to the top so to take care of it I would select at maximum category so I would click on this and it brings back the date below here now I would close this let me also delete the legend now I would right click uh, on this and select format axis for the X horizontal value axis and here I would change the minimum so you can see that this is the distance which I need to delete so I would do one thing I would put in this value here which is 27 September 2014 so you need not have the exact value of 27 9 2014 you can simply put the data and it would automatically convert it into a value so I would put this data and I would hit enter and as soon as I do this you can see that now my chart now my Gantt chart starts from this and it takes duration 1 and then it goes down and takes duration 5 days and then so on and so forth I would also change the major axis to 20 so that I can see these uh, values in date and I would close this I can now simply delete these vertical grid lines and my Gantt chart is ready so this is how you can very quickly create a Gantt chart in Excel. Here I have product names and their sales year on year change. These are values in percentage and if I plot this data in a column chart, so I go to insert and I plot this in a column chart, I get this kind of chart. It would be a good idea if I can have the data labels and within data labels I could show the upward arrow if it is a positive change and downward arrow if it is a negative change and the downward arrow and that data label for negative value could also be in a different color say a red color. So to do that I would first get the upward and downward arrow here I would go to insert and here I would go to symbol and within symbol I have selected Arial and in Arial if you scroll down so here if you are at the top and if you scroll down you would find these downward arrows somewhere here so I've already used it so it is in the recently used symbols now let me insert the upward arrow and the downward arrow and I'll close it now let me make minor changes to, to this uh, graph here this bar is crossing the axis where it says product one product two so I would simply go and format axis 
and I would go to labels and here I would say label position should be low so that it comes down here so that I have all these bars available very neatly now I would right click and add data labels as of now it shows 19% now to add an upward arrow to it I would have to change its formatting I can press control 1 and it'll take me it'll open the control formatting uh, number formatting dialog box if you're working with 2007 or 2010 then this is a very powerful shortcut you can press control 1 and it opens the format cells dialog box in this case the task pane was already open but in case it is not and you click control 1 the task pane gets open and here I would go to number formatting and here I would say let give me so I would have to copy the upward arrow first I would copy this and again go here press control 1 go down in number I would say this should be the arrow in double quotes and the format should be 0.0%, .0 because it's a year on year, year on year change it is in percentage let me click on add and as soon as I click on add you can see that all these data labels get a positive upward arrow and the 0.0, .0 percentage formatting even the negative ones because I've only added one uh, of the codes and if I only type one for all these four as I mentioned there are four parts to a number format positive negative zero and text if I only type one then that is applied to all but I would also type one for negative so I would select the downward arrow again I would go to number formatting here and I would separate it by a semicolon and I would put the downward arrow in double quotes and I would type 0.0% now when I click add you can see that the downward arrow is available you can, can be seen in those data labels where the growth is negative here 1.0% and 3.0% but I also want a negative sign along with a different color so to do that I would again press control 1 go down here in number formatting and here I would type at the beginning I would type RED and this is one of the colors that Excel understands and it would make this data label red and I would also type a minus here before 0 0.01 uh, before 0.0 percent now when as soon as I click on add you can see that these data labels now have an upward arrow or a downward arrow depending on the value and a red color is for negative values so now if you change something here if you make it minus 8% you can see that this changes to a red color with a downward arrow so this is how you can introduce arrows in the data labels in your charts here I have some data for these years 2009 to 13 I have the target values and I have the actual values these could be uh, maybe say revenue growth target values or profitability target values or these could be sales target values and this chart is one of the representations you can use to show target versus actual values and if you see on see this chart green bar represents actual values and blue bar represent target values and you can see that it was 2009 and 2012 when the target was met so I'll show you how to create this let me delete it and I'll show you how to create this from scratch I would select this entire data go to insert and I would insert a clustered column chart now here you can see that I have uh, both these values plotted together for 2009 10 11 and so on so the first thing I would do is I would right click on uh, the actual values go to format data series it will open the format data series task pane if you're using 2010 or 7 then it will open the format data series dialog box and here I would put it on secondary axis and I would change the gap width so I would increase the gap width and as soon as I do this you can see that uh, the actual values which is in orange color they are now narrower than the target values so the target value is something which is broad and then within that we have the actual values now I can simply change its color so I would change the color to uh, say green here and similarly I can change the color for the target values as well so I would put blue here with maybe a good border so I would put maybe a good blue border here maybe a green border 
and now when I close this you have this chart ready and it is as simple as this now when you make any changes here so for example if the actual value was 5% then you can see that this changes now you can also fix these axes if you want uh, although it does not make any changes because both these axes should be the same for example here it is 20% and here it is 12% so while this is secondary axis of the similar kind of data these values may change so it's a good idea to make them uh, equal so I would go to format axis and I would make this say the maximum value here is 18% so let me make it 0.2 and I would fix it at 0.2 similarly I would also go here and I would fix this at 0.2 and minimum at 0 of course now I can delete one of these axes and I can also change the axis here right click on it and change the major to 0 0.04 so that it looks neater and I would delete these grid lines and that is it your target versus actual chart is ready if you make any changes here if you make it 7% uh, then you would see that this chart would update itself here I have the data for these 20 companies their revenue numbers and their profit margin numbers and if I plot this data this data on a scatter chart so I would go to insert and I would plot this in a scatter chart this is what I would get so my revenue numbers are on the x-axis and my profit uh, margin numbers are on the y-axis so if I look at this data point it means that this is somewhere less than 8,000 8, in revenue and uh, their profit margin numbers are close to 28 now scatter charts are very widely used I use it in my work quite often but the problem with scatter charts is that it is difficult to identify the data points. So for example, if I look at company number nine and company number nine looks interesting to me, then it is difficult to spot that. First, I'll have to check, okay, this is close to 7,000, must be somewhere here, then 4.9%, okay, this might be the data point. Similarly, if I'm interested in company 11, then I'll have to go and see maybe this is the data point or maybe this is the data point. It is difficult to spot it. So I'll tell you a technique using which you can spot the data point quickly when you select a company from here. So I have this drop down of these company names and as soon as you select a company I would want that data point to get highlighted. And the first thing I want to do is I would have to extract the data point. So I would use VLOOKUP formula and I would say this is the lookup value company 14 within this table array and the x axis value should be from column number 2. Now when I hit enter it gives me 3487 which means company 14 the x-axis value is 3487 similarly I can create one for y-axis this is the lookup value in this table array and it should be the third column now when I hit enter it gives 0 0.053 which is 5.3 percent now all I need to do is I would select this chart go to design select data and within this I would add another series and in this series let me name this spot the company and the x-axis value would be this value and the y-axis value would be this value and as soon as I click OK and click OK you can see that now this data point is highlighted in a different color if I change the company if I make this company 4 I would instantly know that this is the data point for company 4 similarly if I change this to 18 I would know that this is company 18 so this is a very good way to spot the data point if you have a scatter chart and if you have a lot of lot of data points then this is one of the best ways to spot that data point now let me first show you the end product what we are trying to create here I have the monthly sales data here and I have a chart here now the idea is that this is the target line your monthly target and all those months where you exceed your the target or you meet the target the bars get highlighted in a different color and you have the flexibility to choose the target or change it on the fly so here I have this scroll bar and as soon as I move the scroll bar you can see that the target line moves and whenever there is a month where the target is met it gets highlighted in green color for example here for September and March they are highlighted in green because they meet the target which is this value as of now and I can change this so now I change the target and let me make it 
this so the target as of now is 214 and you can see that in the chart there are seven months where this target has been met and all these get highlighted in a different color now let me show you how to create this from scratch so all you would have is the sales data for 12 months and 12 months sales data the first thing is to identify those months where the target has been achieved so to do that I have the target value here I've randomly put any number which is 200 here and I use a formula where I say if this value in B2 is greater than the target value and I lock it by pressing F4 if this is greater than this value then this value should be displayed else display not available and I hit control enter and you can see that there is a not available sign here a not available value because the target is not met it's 80 by while the target is 200 and I drag this down and you can see whenever the target is met that value gets displayed the benefit of using not available is that this does not get plotted in the chart so if I plot this line only those numbers would get plotted where there is a value now I select this entire data set and I go to insert within insert within charts I go to 2d column chart and I click on this so now I have this chart available here where there are two bars one is the actual sales value and the second is the sales value if the target has been met in that month what I need to do is overlap these values in such a way that if the target is met only one bar should be displayed in a different color so I click on this and I right click and I go to format data series here I have the format data series options and there is an option series overlap as of now it says minus 27 percent the meaning is the distance between these if I change this to zero you can see that there is no gap between these and when I increase it you can see that these bars start overlapping with each other so what I will do is I would change this value and make it 100 percent and now when I do that you can see that these bars have a complete overlap so whenever there is a month where the target has been met it is highlighted in a different color now the next step is to create that line that target line a horizontal line that would change when we change the target I'll show you an innovative way to do this and I would use uh, the functionality of error bars in charts so to do that I click on this chart and I go to design here I have select data option and I click on this when I open this I have these two series which I have plotted here one is sales this data and one is above target which is this data I would add another series and I name it target line and the value I choose the target value right. and I click OK now you can see that the color of this bar has changed the reason is that the value is 200 here and I have plotted another series which is called target line here so you can't see it though but as of now here are two bar charts that have been plotted one is for this value 80 and the other is 200 if I change this say and I make it 400 you will see the difference as I make it 400 you can see that there are two charts first is this one which is target line and the other one is above target because this exceeds uh, the limit so now the target is to create an error bar and to do that I would change the series type for this single line that I have plotted on the chart so I go to target line and I change this chart to XY scatter chart and I hit OK now you can see that you see that blue bar that was earlier behind the gray bar and you could not see it earlier now I click on this and I go to design and within design I have this add chart element option within this I have error bars option so I go to error bars and I go to more error bars option and I click this this immediately introduce this horizontal error bar line for that particular scatter plot scatter point so I select this horizontal error bar and you can see that this changed to horizontal error bar now and I go down and I select 
custom custom means that I would myself input the values for the type the amount of error that I want to display on this chart so I click specify value and here in positive value I give the number 11 and in negative I use say 0 and I hit OK and you can see instantly this line gets extended to cover the entire chart if you do not get the right value in the first instance you can do a bit of hidden trial and you will you would get the specified value that would cover the entire chart now when you have this you can see that whenever I would change the target this line would change and the simple reason is that this line is changing because of this point and this point is the plot of this value so whenever I change this if I make it 300 this changes now I do not want to see this value here this this marker here so to do that I click on it and I go to series options within here I have the marker option and I go for none so I select the marker type as none which would and I close this so you can see that the part has gone another thing is that you can see a line here uh, a capping here at both ends of this error bar so you can change that capping as well you again go and right click format error bar and you can see here you have this option so you don't want any cap so you select no cap and that is it close this now once you have this error bar you can format this error bar you can change the color of this line so I go and I select make it red and you can change the width of this line so you make it a bit thick and in style I can change the dash type so that there is a dotted line here and that is it now you have an error bar which would change when you change the target value and whenever the target is met these bars would change its color now the third part is to introduce a scroll bar here to do that first I would fix this value so I would go and I would hit control 1 which is to open the format access option and in maximum value I would use 500 you can use any value even 600 is fine but since uh, if you look at my data the values are the maximum value I think is 480 and so I can safely choose 500 here and I select 500 and major value I select 100 and I close this so you can see that this has 0 to 500 uh, the range is 0 to 500 so now I need to introduce a scroll bar I go to developer tab and here I insert a scroll bar and I select and I insert it now the idea is to fit the scroll bar in such a way that it would move with the error line so if I move this the error line should move with it so to do that first let me fit it with the chart and I right click and I go to format control here I need to change its value for maximum value I would give it 500 because that is the value that is the maximum target that I have set incremental value could be say 10 and pay change value could be 50 incremental value is when you click on this icon here uh, it would change by 10 and when you click anywhere on the scroll bar uh, then it would change by 50 and I need to give a cell link so I select G2 as the cell link here and I click OK so now when you change this value you can see that the value changes here the idea is that this should be linked with the error bar now you would see the problem here is that whenever this thing the value of the scroll bar is zero this slider is at the top and when it's at the bottom the value is maximum which is uh, not right in our case because we want that as it goes up this value should increase so I what I would do is I would change this target value here and I would make it 500 minus the scroll bar value oops I would say is equal to 500 minus the scroll bar value and I hit enter now when I change this the target value changes with the scroll bar and as I move this upwards 
the target line also changes with the scroll bar. Uh, I know this is not a line properly but you can spend some time and make this align in such a way that this is in alignment with the error target line and this moves along with this. So when I change this now it's a bit better. You can see that this changes the color of the bars when a target is met. You can change this I've used green color because that is supposedly a good color to use if you have your targets met you can use green color and that was the color of the line you can go here in fill use solid fill and you can use green color here so as soon as you move down you see that these are the these are the months where you have met the target so this is how you can create this dynamic chart in Excel where the target line moves along with the scroll bar and uh, and whenever uh, the target is met it gets highlighted in a different color I hope you found this useful 